Marchiori is a classically trained Venetian artist who settled in Calistoga about 25 years ago and built a magnificent villa just outside town. And to showcase his work, he built this gallery, which has become a tourist attraction. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm Carlo Marchiori, and I own this gallery that I built about 10 years ago, where I exhibit my work here. Anything from ceramic, paintings, uh, sculpture, bronzes. And so here is, is a painting I, I did, you know, thinking of uh, Venice, 18th century Venice, and it uh, represents Bautas at a sort of a theater box. And um, fascinating culture of Venice because they were so, she was very much uh, uh, into the theaters. They had 16 theaters in Venice. And so there were the opera, the comedias, and the theater, the tragedies, and all that mm -hmm. uh, developed. You know. Why do you suppose the man is wearing a mask? The mask, the mask was sort of a device to, be, to get, to, to achieve anonymity in a big little city like Venice addicted to gossip. Right. So they would use it as sort of to be sort of free to go in, you know, and you would move in and out of casinos, uh, coffee houses, theaters, and uh, the carnivals and the squares and the, you know, page pageants and things. And uh, they would use it throughout the years. And then it's, it's, it become part of sort of Ven Venice life. And we all know that Venice is famous for carnival and all that. You know? mm -hmm. You know, when we built this uh, sh gallery here, I could not resist the idea of doing a little, a little Renaissance uh, building, you know. And I attempted the <clears throat> barrel vault of a sort of an old, say, uh, uh, chapel, you know. And of course, it required the statement of a painted ceiling, and there it is. Everybody's curious to ask me how long I t uh, took to do it. But honestly, I have to tell you that I didn't do it up there. I did it on strips of canvas, which I painted uh, down, down below, you know. And they were all uh, ducked together, duct taped together. And then I, they got installed up there, you know. That's the way we face things now, instead of painting frescoes like they used to do 500 years ago. The subject for the ceiling is the uh, the constellation of the northern hemispheres, you know, with the horoscope, or the, the figures of the, horos the uh, horoscopes, you know, running throughout, you know, and all the various other st strange constellations like the, the bears, the, oh, the, what do you call it, the, 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 the liar, Hercules, and uh, uh, the, the snake charmer, I don't know what they got, all kinds of things. You know, we are fascinated by sort of uh, deer antlers, bones, and uh, here we have a sorry, we have a, a moose antler. You know that I incorporated in the structure. The structure, this sort of shape, that sort of refers to a uh, rooster, and these pieces of bones, you know, bones and things, and I sort of put them together in the sculpture. It helps me to sort of get to to the to the final product. <coughs> because I don't have to sculpt anything and everything else is like better sort of mm -hmm. assembling it together. Yeah. What is the comb made of on top of the rooster? The comb in here on top yeah. of the rooster is a, a moose antler. The antler of a moose. But this really looks like a comb, you see? Uh -huh. So I couldn't have help her. I couldn't have help her. Yeah. And what the about idea. the yeah, what about the uh, Indian uh, painting in back? I understand you're fascinated by the Indians. What fascinates you about this? Well, you know, as Europeans, we were all fascinated with the exotic. Exotic was sort of a was sort of a far, far away land like China or North America. In Italy, when we were kids, we played uh, cowboy and Indians, like everywhere else. <laughs> and uh, well, I was fascinated by the Indians because it was an interesting kind of culture, you know, as you know, all natural and. and, and here we go, we have ribs, we have uh, moose antlers again, we have uh, jaw bones here, 
in bits, bits and pieces, the back of a skull of a cow, or whatever, and uh, into a sort of a, an American Indian, you know. So anyway, it was a part of a process in discovering my roots and my culture, you know, that uh, I could not help uh, interpreting where the various artists that, that sort of, uh, that I like, you know, from the Renaissance on. And here we have Archimboldo, a painter from the 1500s who painted uh, flowers and uh, portraits of flowers and uh, vegetables and things, you know, but these are my own versions of it. And he's down below? Down below here we have a, a series of Pulcinellas on stilts. Pulcinella is a mask from the uh, Commedia dell'arte, the Italian theater, and uh, he's a mask from Naples. And he's very versatile, he can make him do anything you want. I am inspired by the, the, the Pulcinellas that Tiepolo, the artist from the 18th century, painted and drew. And so here again I made, I made them my own. Oh, this is a series of uh, Pulcinellos, you know, tackling alchemy, uh, those impossible dreams that were sort of a favorite uh, preoccupation in the Renaissance, you know, they were trying to turn the stone into gold or whatever it was, you know. And so I did, a, I, I usually put Pulcinellos at, at the impossible task of absurdities. Well, here I have uh, a painting, a series of uh, um, wine subjects with the wine sloshing out, you know, with the sort of uh, celebrating Dapa and uh, Dapa wine. Then we have these two boxers here, these are Get Pulcinellas, uh, they're boxing. And I did it with, uh, by transferring corrugated cardboard, painting corrugated cardboard and transferring out to the, onto the painting, you see. So it's, uh, I like to use sort of a trickery to get around the same old production of a painting, you know? And here we got some bones of our ancestors, I call them. So, that I turned them into a chicken and uh, another mythical prehistoric bird, probably extinct by now, but he resurfaced on my memory. <laughs> And because, as you've seen, I was fascinated with bones and, yeah, and uh, deer antlers and such, and I like the shape of uh, you know, <laughs> human bones. Here yeah, I have sort of a, a skulls and feet and hands. I remember when I used to study anatomy at the art school in Venice in Padua. sort of a mythical source of the Greek days, you know, the Bacchanalia and the, the... Here we have uh, Bacchus <laughs> being bottled up in the Napa, you know, with a sort of flowing wine and flanked by the two uh, uh, panthers. They, they were his sacred animals. Again, here we have the Pulcinellas attempting sort of a, uh, having uh, a Mongol fear or a uh, balloon, air balloon, but it's made of bricks, as you can see. So it's the anachronism of sort of the impossible tasks of the, you know, the impossible dreams. You know, 
again this is another piece of furniture that I like to paint and I turn this into a sort of a, a wine uh, not cooler but it was a storage place you know a wine cabinet and uh, we have uh, leftover dish the leftover Monster mushrooms. And up there we have Sicily, the Trinatria, which is the symbol for Sicily. Pecunia, it means money in Latin, you know. And so this is a little sign that, I, that I, I redeem an old tiles, you know, floor, floor tiles, terracotta tiles from Italy, very old. I glaze it and I write in uh, my nice, you know, old lettering, money or any, anything in Latin, because Latin is a little bit more sort of evocative, than, you know, that... ceramic dishes because I used to do, I would have done that in Italy I had not left, I would have worked at a ceramic factory and I'd be sort of stuck painting dishes for the rest of my life. discovered these people that make uh, anything you want. And so we had this monk's design with a dog and they make it. And then they went on on their own and they did every part possible connected to a mug, you see. Here's the mug, you know, with the thing. And of course, the bull terrier, and so you got the right mug.
This concludes our visit to Carlo Marchiori's gallery, but he also has a villa, Cartoga, not far away, and tours can be arranged at the gallery. This is definitely one of the top tourist attractions here in the wine country, where the Veneto is brought to you. Over a period of 25 years, Carlo built and decorated this Palladian-style villa and furnished the five acres with his follies, products, he says, of my madness. Here, all of a sudden, when I had to face the project of retirement home, I said I wanted to do a sort of recreate the prototype that is sort of is in the Veneto area, you know, where I come from, this Palladian villas. It was a bit of an, uh, an attempt, you know, uh, but uh, I like history and I like to sort of reinterpret it and uh, I know I would have enjoyed uh, recreating and at the same time I was put on the sort of like, on the challenge of sort of trying to recreate something but I didn't want to do it too academically and too pedantic and I wanted to do it with a little bit of sense of humor, some place where I could live in comfortably, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean to have a villa, I mean you've got to have the servants to polish the silverware. But this is a villa where you know that you had to sell the silverware to pay the, the, the taxes. <laughs> and so I enjoy it because it's, it's sort of, it looks uh, like grandeur, but it's not. It's very practical that I live in, you know, with my dogs. And after a while, I don't even see the fresco there, so like. And here we are. You're welcome to Katoka, please.